Welcome to this video. We are going to learn about double slit diffraction. Now, imagine instead of taking our water waves and sending them toward a single slit, the screen that they head toward has two slits. And each of these slits is incredibly small, right? In fact, we could imagine each slit is only uh, as big as a single point. So we send the water waves toward that slit, and when the water waves reach the two slits, it's no different than dropping a rock into each slit because the water here starts bobbing up and down and the water here starts bobbing up and down. And so, well, waves can cause it to bob up and down, but rocks can too. So we imagine dropping a rock or a pebble in each of the slits. Now, because those slits are so small, only a single pebble fits down here and only a single pebble fits up there. There's just a single point source at each slit. That first point source, or that first pebble you could think of it as, generates crests. And I'm not showing the troughs, but in between each of the two crests, there's a trough here. And between these two crests, there would be a trough. This bottom point source generates its own crests as well. And just like we did with single slit diffraction, we could draw in rays where there's always constructive interference. What's constructive interference? Oh yeah, that means that you have crests overlapping with crests and troughs overlapping with troughs. So where do you see the crests overlapping in this picture? Where do you see solid lines overlapping? Here it is. That's the first ray where we have solid lines overlapping, crests overlapping with crests. There's another ray where there's constructive interference. Here's another ray of constructive interference, and there's more over here. Now, the destructive interference occurs as well, but that's harder to see from these semicircles because I'm not showing where the troughs are. I'm only drawing in the crests in this picture. There are no dotted lines for troughs. But needless to say, uh, there's between every two rays, between these two rays of constructive interference, Right in between, there's a ray of destructive interference. And between these two constructive interference rays, there will be destructive interference right between. And here's another ray of destructive and another ray of destructive interference. So now imagine instead of sending water waves through the two slits, we send instead light waves. The exact same thing happens. You get this constructive and destructive interference. So for light, wherever you have constructive interference, that's a bright spot. The intensity is really high. Destructive interference is a dark spot. So we're going bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, and so forth. We can plot a graph showing the intensity just like we did before. And obviously we're gonna have a peak in the intensity at this bright spot right here. And there's another peak here and another peak here. But notice, as we go down the line, these fringes are staying roughly the same intensity. So the graph doesn't actually decrease all that much. Here's what it looks like. The peak intensity right at the center of the fringe, the peak intensity value is about the same for all of these fringes. Let's compare this with single slit diffraction. With single slit diffraction, we get a pattern like that. The graph of intensity looks like this. With double slit, we get a pattern like this. The intensity graph is shown. Let's compare and comp contrast these. In both cases, we have fringes, right? Bright spots separated by darkness. And in both cases, there's a bright spot right at the middle, directly behind the slits. Here's that bright spot right in the middle for a single slit, and here's a bright spot right in the middle for the double slits. The final comparison is about the size of that central bright spot. Down here in the single slit, the central bright spot is twice as wide as the fringes. But up here, the central bright spot, if you look at the graph on top, the intensity graph, the central bright spot is equally wide as all of the other fringes. So those are the comparisons we can make. All right, final thing is to learn an equation that governs double slit diffraction. Here's your double slit. We send waves through, and let's say it's light waves. They strike the back screen, 
and here's the pattern we get. The intensity graph looks like this, but I'm going to take it away for now. Needless to say, there's a central maximum right here in intensity. This distance from the slits to the screen is called big D. This distance between the two slits is called little d. This distance from the central bright spot to this first fringe is called S. And it's also called the location of that first fringe. Now, there's some terminology that we have to learn. This central bright spot has a few different names. Sometimes it'll be called the center fringe or the central fringe. Sometimes it's just the middle of this back screen here where the spot appears. Sometimes it's called directly behind the slits. So this is directly behind the slits. And sometimes it's called the central maximum or the central intensity maximum because the graph is really high right there. This first bright spot on the side has some names. It's called the first fringe, the first bright spot, the first intensity maximum. And we contrast that first spot from the central spot. So this, we give, we give this one here the name first, and the one in the middle we call it the central or the center. There is an equation that tells us how these three things are related. Here's our equation. The location of that first cent, uh, sorry, the location of that first fringe, S, position of the fringe, is equal to the wavelength lambda times big D over little d.